Hello, we're back. Uh, more with AutoCAD, more with AutoCAD and Crane Air logo. Uh, now we have the basic outline of our logo, and again, your logo design could be anything. It could be anything. What we're going to be doing to finish this logo up is we're going to put in uh, our, you know, the rest of the, the blocks that represent uh, the lettering that goes uh, with my, my logo. But if you have a sketch logo and you put it in the background, you can follow these very same techniques. So let's go ahead and turn on that layer. Back to our image layer, and just to demonstrate uh, the rest of this, I'm only going to do a portion of this. I'm going to stop and pick it up or as if we had this thing already completed. But let's go ahead and draw this down and draw, you know, just a basic outline. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of drop the lines in where they're supposed to appear, where you think they might appear. Take the image layer, turn that off, go back in here, and let's uh, kind of clean that up a little bit. We can extend that and then bring this back and that should work out pretty good what we want to do is create enclosed geometry so we can put some hatching in there and I don't know if we covered hatching very well in uh, the AutoCAD portion but this is the button you want to use it's up in a draw panel it's called hatch and just for demonstration I'm going to show you how to do that there's all sorts of uh, different patterns you could use I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, cross hatch pattern that's up here and what it's looking for is enclosed geometry when you do this. So you want to click inside of that and yeah, that actually is a pretty decent scale. You can change your scale up here if you like. If you want to make the lines a little bit further away or a little bit closer, you can do that. I've noticed that a lot of companies use hatching instead of solids in order to provide some sort of a, you know, depth or color or boldness to their uh, designs, to their logos. And if you want to see what that looks like, if we go to our uh, website, there's this portion of the website. It shows you some uh, logos that I've used in the past. Gray and Osborne, HDR, Turner Construction, Department of Corrections, Integris Architectures, and whatnot. All these logos were created in AutoCAD. And if you look at the, the Gray and Osborne logo a little bit quicker. Oh, what happened there? Where did you go? All right. There we are. We're back again. I'm trying to get a little bit closer to that, but if you look at the G and O portion of the of the of their logo, it's actually cross hatching. It's just small lines that are connected together. What happens with AutoCAD is that uh, sometimes when you put in a bold hatching, it kind of goes beyond the borders of uh, what you're trying to hatch, and it kind of makes the you know the the design you're trying to do a little bit um, kind of exceeds the border and makes it a little bit more bold, perhaps more bold than you really want it to be. So, again, all these were created in AutoCAD. The, the reason why we have different colors in here is because a lot of times in AutoCAD, colors represent line thicknesses. So when you print these things out, green would be, in, uh, for instance, with gray and Osborne, green would be a very bold line. Yellow would be less bold, and white would be the least bold. It would have the least definition to it. So, enough said there. These are examples of some logos you might want to try, all done in AutoCAD. So let's go back over here. Again, let's go back and do our hatching. Once we have the hatch settings already done over here, if we did uh, perhaps this version, this portion of my logo, it should have the same uh, settings. And if I wanted to, I can click on that hatch and make modifications to it. it takes a few minutes. And we're waiting. And we're waiting some more, so if you want to adjust the, the scale on it, you could do that. If you want to make that different from some of the other ones. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is we'll have this uh, mostly done. And I'm going to be adding some text to it, change the colors all back to white, and then we're going to import that into Revit Architecture.